Okay, so now I'm under the engine. I can show you from here what the belts look like from here. Uh, see, I got everything tight now, everything I wanted, power steering and whatnot. Sorry for those flashes of light. Okay, so, so here's something I wanted to share with you guys that you normally don't run into until you start going back together and you just kind of take breaks in between. So anyways, this is our, our new fuel pump, right? She's nice and shiny. And these two lines right here are training lines. Well, these should be on the inside here and on the outside. And how I found that out was, let's scoot down over here to our transmission. You can see we have two transmission lines and then two fitting right here, two fittings right here where they're supposed to go. Well, they can't line up and I have absolutely no wiggle room and I was kind of trying to trace it back to why is it so tight and it's because it's, it's just butted up on here so I have to take this line off put these inside and then put the uh, fuel line back on uh, you know it's a cool feeling and the radiator is going back in. It's a really cool feeling. It's kind of surreal, almost. Okay, jumping back under the car. I got the uh, trans lines in. Now I have this wire. I'm not really sure what it does, but I know it goes right there, which is a good thing. So I'll just put it up there. Move a little forward. Uh, I have this bracket right here which appears to line up with these two bolts. So I'll have to loosen them and then put this right there. This connector over here goes up there. Yeah, that's in the way, right to that. And then I see that little bolt right there. I think it gets through that harness goes to hold it in place. Um, this appears to be some shift, more shift linkage stuff. Don't really know. I'm not a transmission guy. It's not my forte. So um, I have to go back and watch our video of us taking this thing out to see how it exactly goes back together. Sorry, it's not focusing, is it? There, that's a little better. Okay, so here's a beautiful day outside and getting some sun. But uh, I guess it's messing with my lighting a little too much. So, I mean, I'm pretty close. Uh, let me see. I can sneak over to the other side real quick to show you the transmission lines that I got in. These were super fun. This one was easy. This one was really fun. I had about that much space to turn the wrench as I attempted to tighten it. Uh, got the lines to the radiator in. I'll show you what okay, so pretty exciting stuff. Uh, got some stuff that I wanted to get done today. Some things I didn't. So here I got my STP uh, oil filter. I don't normally do this uh, if I'm doing it on my daily driver because, well, it's a daily driver. There's usually oil throughout the engine, but you know, we did prime this, but I want to make sure we have, I, I want to take every step possible to make sure we don't have a dry start. So I'm going to fill the oil filter with, uh, somebody call me, uh, with oil so that the oil has even less a path of travel to where it needs to go. So, let's fill this bad boy up. And then whatever's remaining will go, obviously, hopefully obviously, to everybody. We'll go in the engine. Okay, that should be good. Hopefully nothing. And if it look too much to where when I put it in, it leaks on me. So always make sure, if you can see it, grab a little oil, lube up the o-ring you know you don't want this to catch and get a little rip of tear and have an oil leak i mean it's an easy fix but just you know at first you freak out you're like oh my gosh what's going on so it was nice okay so i'm gonna take the oil cap off throw my funnel in there and then slowly but surely pull this thing up
it's almost done this bottle's almost empty so i'll just show you what it looks like in here you don't want to go too high so it doesn't spill over on the outside but i mean i don't want to be holding this bottle forever either that looks like we're done i put about three gallons in here of this transmission fluid make sure you get the right stuff i had to make sure that i read the back here to make sure it's compatible with this vehicle and see right here so gm 2005 models or prior that's what we are so not used in anything with the dextron looks like what five so we are not <laughs> anything 2005 near we're definitely about 20 odd years before that so got the right fluid it's always a good thing hey oh and the reason i put so much uh transmission fluid in here was because i was filling it all the way uh it was a complete um refill so torque converter and everything so three gallons okay so i got the battery in but my light bulb is off which is not a great sign <laughs> um anytime i put the battery in before that light turns on and gives us like a just kind of a little morale boost and well i'm gonna try to crank this thing over and just see if that bulb died hopefully it's nothing more than that a dead battery so I thought before I try to crank this over, I make sure that I have a good um, amount of oil in here. That's a good idea, don't you think? So. Okay, good. I'm like just under the full line. So I'm gonna show this, show that to you guys. As you can see, just right under. I'm good with that nice clean oil so i'll wipe this off throw it back in there <clears throat> i'm pretty sure i could throw like a quarter to half a quart to be right on the full line so my ocd doesn't like kill me all right just so you can see i'm not messing with you guys here okay this is the key. Back in the day, there were two keys. So I drop it in there. Nothing. So I think the issue is that I need to get my battery charged. So we got that battery like a year ago, and I feel like it died. I think the battery's dead. So, well, that's uh, well, I have that going on. I gotta go drop it off at AutoZone to get charged. I'm gonna, okay, got the battery here. I'm going back in. Uh, got my stamp of approval on it. I don't think it's a good battery, just dead. Um, <clears throat> so let me hook this back up. I have a side post tool here, specifically for side post batteries. I was gonna say for GM products, but um, really for specifically GM products it's just any kind of side post uh, vehicle so I'm gonna see now that I have a confirmed battery uh, charge battery excuse me I'm gonna see if that light turns on that I was talking about so let's give her a look here I got the negative in Positives going on right now. Oh, oh, that light turned on for a second. Oh, oh, is there some life in this thing? Come on. Oh, okay. Look at that. That's some good news. It also helps me uh, take care of one other concern that I had seeing that the light is on <clears throat> excuse me is that there's no <laughs> electrical issue that i messed up you guys see that light that's on all right so that's a great great okay, great so things i'm looking for as i start it are going to be well one to have fuel so it looks like i have a quarter tank i do have a couple gallons i'll throw in there real quick i want to see most important importantly is oil pressure i want to see it around that 30 mark so if i don't see that within the first few seconds i'm gonna be shutting this thing down like I said, 
throwing some fresh fuel in there before I crank this over. Again, but on this end. See that oil pressure? I know we're still we're still trying to suck fuel in, but seeing that oil pressure is really good. Okay. This is old school, so I'll give it, give, give it a couple pumps, some pump action here. <laughs> and uh, again, like I said, what we're trying to focus on is oil pressure. I call it a day I want to do my final inspections and I'm looking for any kind of moisture oil leak or anything like that I am expecting some level of grease and what not to fall down and look like moisture but I mean I can, I'll be able to tell the difference here real quick so oil filter area looks good that's nice uh, rear main seal looks pretty good if you guys don't remember it's right there and oil pan area is looking pretty good you can see it a little better on this side Let's scooch over to the front. Still looks good. Our timing cover area looking good. Uh, oil pan gasket, the front main seal where the harmonic balancer goes in. All good. Very, very happy. So I'm going to... If you made it to the end of the video, like you should have if you're watching this, uh, you know that we ended on a really, really high note. Actually, like on a milestone today with the uh, engine starting, cranking over and staying on, right? So... That's a that's a big thing. I'm super excited about it. Honestly, I was I was jumping up and down off camera to be honest. But I'm just here to talk about a few things and make some things apparent if they weren't and if I didn't explain them during the video. Someone I know who's not too car savvy uh, brought up to my attention that I might need to explain why it was so important to hook up the transmission before I tried to start the car. Well, the linkage and everything needs to be hooked up so that the car knows it's in park. It's also good that I know this in park, so nothing starts turning down there that I'm not aware of. And the other thing is those transmission lines, they need to be hooked up as well, so that as the torque converter is turning over, fluid is not just being pushed out of the lines and being wasted uh, all over the ground. So just some things I wanted to cover. And I do wanna say I'm super duper excited. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm actually sitting inside the Monte Carlo. I'm just kind of uh, enjoying uh, this day soaking up the moment uh, before I head in and uh, call it a night uh, it was a long journey but man we can see the finish line from here and if you've been watching these YouTubes I uh, hope you'd enjoy this journey when we get to that finish line you know the videos are going to change we're going to like hook up a GoPro start going for drives take this this t-top off and enjoy this great California weather everyone have a good rest of your weekend later <laughs>